Paul back with more questions off the internet. And if you too want to be cool and have us answer your questions off the internet, you could email them to us at TOTL at abyssheadphones.com. Maybe we'll answer them. So this one from PlantsGuy404. Hey, Abyss team. I live in a pretty hot region and have to cool my house 24-7. Will hi-fi equipment raise my power bill? Will some affect it more than others? Thanks. Love your videos. Yeah, this is actually a fair question. Because um, oddly enough, the efficiency and power consumption of amplifiers and various hi-fi products, it varies greatly in this uh, particular trade. How about big screen TVs? They get kind mm. of toasty, don't they? Depends on the TV. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But some things don't take a lot of power. Other things take quite a bit. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you look at your portable devices powered by a battery. They kind of have to be fairly efficient and fairly low power. Otherwise, you know, the battery will be dead immediately. Um, but your desktop stuff that plugs into the wall, much less of a concern. And some of these things, especially tube amps, mm. a lot of times they take 100, 200 watts, maybe even more in some cases. Yeah, and it's something to consider because when you look at the power draw, that's continuous, though. Yeah. You can't really look at a If max. you leave it on 24-7, yeah. yeah. But most of that power is dissipated as heat, so it's going to go Pretty much all It's it. going to go in the room. Especially if yeah. it's a small room, yeah. you'll notice. That's true. Yeah. With the door closed. <laughs> door closed. Yeah. So, yeah, that's true. Additively, all these things... Additively, in a home, you don't really think, we don't think about it because, you know, a lot of parts of the country, you open a window or... It depends you know, on where you live. Well, you live in a cold climate where you're heating most of the year, it doesn't really matter if your amp takes 50 watts and heats yeah. your space up a little bit. You've got plenty it's of cold air deal, leaking right? into the home. Yeah, it'll help, <laughs> it'll help the, the heating system. Yeah, right, it helps right. you out. So, yeah. for the most part, pretty much every modern thing you buy, if it takes power, almost 100% of that power ends up as heat inside your house. Yeah. So if something takes 100 watts, it pretty much is a 100-watt heater. And they're all just the same efficiency at heating in that regard. Um, except for maybe like light bulbs that are outside your house mm -hmm. or something that are emitting radio motors, waves that leave your house. Yeah, or yeah. motors that are more doing some work with the power, but that's, that's not quite Well, 100%. it all gets converted to heat eventually. Mm -hmm. I guess at some point it goes As long somewhere. as the heat doesn't leave the house, as long as the work isn't oh, getting right. pumped out of the house, it's yeah. getting converted to heat. Well, with LED house. lighting and stuff, that helped an awful lot. They still get a little warm, but nothing like in cans used yeah, to be. Yeah, 10 times less yeah, power. Yeah, yeah. Literally yeah. less than right. Less than that. Yeah, I mean, you could keep a chicken coop warm with one 100-watt ball back in the day. Well, it's practically 100 watts <laughs> of heat. It's a 100-watt right? heater. Yeah. And now well, it's like seven. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's a little bit better now. Yeah, not bad. Yeah. People used to use light bulbs as a heater, so it doesn't really work so much anymore. But yeah, with most of the stuff the for headphones, equipment. it's lower-power devices. Yeah, that pretty much sorts that. So out. while they run a little warm, it probably isn't going to be a big deal. And then, of course, if you're running into heat issues like that, you can always turn it off when you're not using it, you know? It's a little issue because you usually want your gear warm to sound better, so you got to preheat it. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know. If you're driving things like big monobloc amps for a two-channel system, oh, yeah. those could be significant, yeah. especially if they're Class A. Yeah. Uh, some of these amps could be a couple hundred watts yeah. just doing nothing, sitting there on. I have 500-watt monos at home, and when I leave them on, and I, don't, I, don't, I only leave them on in the winter mm. in my dedicated room, but... It'll raise the temperature in the room about five, six degrees probably yeah. mm -hmm. over not having them on. And you can actually notice the electric bill higher at the end of the month if you leave them on for a month. Yeah. It's probably twenty, thirty dollars or more a month. Yeah, well, <laughs> to leave them on. Twenty-four hours a day adds up. <laughs> yeah, you know that. <laughs> yeah. So they, were, I mean, they're not hot, but still, they're big blocks of aluminum that are, you know, warm. Yeah, hundred degrees, hundred five degrees, and they're just constantly radiating heat. Well, I, I've heard a few people now at shows in particular that um, they specifically have, they live in like deserts essentially, and they specifically have summertime amps and wintertime amps. Oh, right. So they're like, they might use tubes in the winter, and then I switch over to something more efficient yeah. in, in the summer. Because I, I guess if, if like all you have is like a like a one window AC unit or something, then you don't want to tax problem. it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But if you're running central air. You know, to me, just make sure that things up to date. Get a more modern one. You could pump as much cool air as you want to, to compensate for your electronics. Right? Yeah, oddly <laughs> enough, most people are scared about making heat in the summer because um, their system either can't handle it or they have the perception that it's going to have very high costs to cool. Yeah. But generally speaking, it's not as much as people would expect, uh, especially when you're talking about amplifiers for headphones. Most of the amps are going to be less than 50 watts. And you could do the math, but uh, for the most part, you're looking at 
in the range of 10 cents a day if you leave it on depends on where you live yeah and that if it's that hot out chances are the ambient temperature of the walls of your home are way right. warming the house more than well, yeah. in the roof structure windows and so yeah windows letting <laughs> the sun in. yeah you got way more problems than a small uh, headphone amp's gonna do well, and if you have a tube amp, turn it off. Yeah, right. <laughs> Don't leave just that's leave kind it of on. a given anyway. Yeah, right. yeah, you may sweat a little bit while you're listening, but yeah, yeah, turn you. You don't want to leave tube amps on anyway. So yeah, it's the best yeah. practice to not leave them on. And if yeah. you're concerned about these things, or if you do have very high electric costs, best bet is to get a power meter. See how much your actual appliance takes. Yeah, you could do that. There's a bunch of those things like kilowatt is a popular one here in the U.S. There's a whole bunch of different brands and models for different plugs and voltages overseas. And it's really kind of necessary to measure your actual device because uh, it varies widely. Some things take very little power. Could you get one of those like infrared guns and just point it at things? You could do that, yeah. Measure well, how warm everything. Of course, you could just touch it with your well, hands. Yeah. Tell, <laughs> but, you know, yeah, but right. that'll give you like walking around a room with it. You could just point it right. It gives you like an indication like where, where the hotter things are It gives you a vague idea, but you could also do it by feel. The trouble is with those kinds of things, it's dependent on the surface. Yeah. Uh, the emissivity of the surface is going to vary the uh, the actual readout. I guess I'm picturing ones that have like they actually have a screen on it, so you could point it at a wall and it shows the hot yeah. spots. Yeah, yeah, camera. Yeah. yeah, yeah, those are kind of cool. How much those things cost? You get them for 150 bucks or so now. Yeah. That those are kind of neat. Smartphone like, models, not just like a simple thermometer because that's crude. Well, yeah. But to be able to throw it and look at it, I saw like guys that are doing that when they're trying to actually improve homes. Yeah. yeah, efficiency and insulation. Oh, you've never done that? I've, I don't have one. Oh. No, no, that would be pretty cool, though, to be able to have one It's of pretty cool. So I was wondering how much they were. You know, maybe we should have one here at the shop. Why have one? We could, what, measure the, we could watch the temperature of our We could walk around and do... DMS can walk around and video uh, everything that's hot in here. Uh -huh. Oh, hot thing? <laughs> or cold. Okay. <laughs> or somewhere in between. <laughs> yeah, we'll I've, one of those. I've, I've, I've used one in my room to check it out. And you can see, like, the, all the two-by-fours and everything. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. That's pretty cool. You have You own one? Eric has one. So it's anyway, not that exciting unless it's yeah. really hot outside. Yeah, well, or right. really cold. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know. I see what you mean. It's, everything's you kind need of a big delta. the same yeah. level. Pretty much. Yeah, yeah. gotcha. Yeah. Well, you get the thermal bridging from the two by fours, so they're different heat. We could open a refrigerator. Sure. That'd be cool. Yeah. yeah Everything go that. blue. I guess. Yeah. Well, you, you'll see the, the coolness rolling out. Turn you can. On. It is actually pretty cool. You see your footsteps. Yeah. Oh, really? You could just walk at a normal pace across a floor, yeah. and if you feel it with your hand, you can't feel the temperature gradient from where right. you walk, right. but you could very clearly see the bright red spot from where your where foot you was, stepped. where you just stepped. And it's visible for a minute or two sometimes yeah. even. And with more sensitive equipment, you could see it for a long time. Yeah, it's they surprising make really nice how ones. sensitive you could get this stuff. Yeah. So that's but to answer the question. Yeah, right. We'll round this one up. Yes, it does depend on the gear, and it will raise your power bill a little bit if you leave it on 24-7. But for the most part, headphone stuff really doesn't take a lot of power. Relative to a household, if you're not monitoring these things super closely, if you're not hyper-efficient, you're probably not going to notice it. Yeah. Um, and generally speaking, leaving it on 24-7 is a little wasteful anyways, unless you use it so much that it doesn't matter. Um, but if you use it an hour a day, just turn it off. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, those who have cooler seasons, other than summer, it's actually helpful to have it. Yeah, it's not an issue. <laughs> a little then, yeah. warm there. It's a you know? really low-power space heater. Yeah. Tuck it right. in the corner of the room where it's always cooler, you know. Mm. Yeah, you could do that even yeah. out the room <laughs> right and right. plan ahead if you're in an <laughs> area where you have source <laughs> if you're in an area where you use electric heat anyways yeah then your hi-fi system is just as efficient as a space heater yeah right same and cost operate it produces audio yeah produces right. audio so it's better yeah, yeah you might as well better. use it yeah because space heaters don't they don't do produce much a lot of audio yeah. no, i've never heard one sound good no no on that note that's that yeah yeah i think we i guess we'll wrap that one up the question let's wrap this one up and uh, back to work, I guess, because we have a lot of headphones. Mm -hmm. yeah. So anyway, uh, thank you for watching, everyone. And remember, we need questions. We always need questions to answer. If you mm -hmm. got any, TOTL at a bit of his headphones .com. Take care. We should have, oh, a gnome enthusiast to send gnomes in. We need we need a name for this gnome. What about Harry this the one? gnome? <laughs> this one doesn't have a name. Either. Well, actually, none of them have names. That's Barry. Probably. That one's Harry. Yeah, Barry and Harry. There's yeah. no third gnome. Well, yeah, I thought there was two of those. I thought you had to before. Maybe we should have someone name them in the comments. We'll put that at the end of the video for our dedicated viewers. If you're still, if you're still looking and <laughs> yeah. you want more content, spend yeah. the next 20 minutes thinking of a name for a gnome. Yeah.